Hi guys, this is David with BTEC with an update on the Huawei ban. Founder and CEO of Huawei, Rong Zhongfei, has said in an interview with Chinese media that the US campaign against the company would not be powerful enough to call everyone to follow them. I hope he's right because at the moment quite a few key component suppliers have pulled out from any dealings with Huawei, including Qualcomm, Intel and of course Google and Arm. The last two being probably the most crucial as they supply the operating system as well as the processing cores of their devices. From where we're standing it kind of seems like Huawei are totally dead in the water. So how could they possibly keep making smartphones at this point? Before I go on, I want to say a big thank you to Direct Mobiles. They have over 24 years of award winning custom service and it is a great place to look if you want the best possible deal on your next handset. Check their comparison tools to find the right deal for you. Their link is in the video description below or just search directmobiles.co.uk. In his interview, Run Junfei said that restrictions imposed on them by the US will not affect the rollout of its 5G technology. He says that in sectors where we have the most advanced technologies, at least in the 5G sector, there won't be any impact because their competitors won't be able to catch up for two to three years anyway. And even if supply lines were cut, they could still manufacture all of their own high-end chips themselves. He says that the company believes in a one plus one policy, which means half of its chips come from the US companies and the other half come from Huawei. He goes on to say that despite the much lower cost of their own chips, they would still buy higher priced chips from the US because they don't want to isolate themselves from the rest of the world. These relationships won't be destroyed by a piece of paper from the US government, he says. It's not clear whether this is just damage limitation rhetoric or whether Huawei could really just operate self-sufficiently. And although many companies have cut ties with Huawei, some companies have come out and said that they would continue to work with them, such as Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company or TSMC, who are the world's largest contract chipset maker. But even if they get the hardware sorted, what about the software? We know they have their own app store and have been working on their own operating system for a while now called Hongmeng. They say that this will be ready for Chinese devices by autumn this year and by early 2020 for the rest of us. And I think that this is the most exciting thing to come out of all of this. It would be really great to have a third alternative to your phone's operating system. To achieve that would be incredibly hard I think, but I think that if anybody has a chance of doing it, given the following and the backing that they have, it's Huawei. But it's not just about the OS, it's about the apps too. YouTube, Gmail, Maps, all of these would need good alternatives, which do exist at the moment and could be done. But what would be much harder for them to do is to crack the messaging apps, such as WhatsApp. But again, these apps really don't have any competition at the moment. So although it would be really hard to position themselves into that market, effectively, the rewards would be huge. But hopefully it won't come to that. Analysts at Nomura Instanet wrote that Google could lose between 375 million and 425 million per year in a worst case scenario from the Huawei ban. In his interview, the Huawei boss spoke about the relationship with Google. He said that Google are a good company and a highly responsible company and that they are trying to persuade the US government to solve the problem and that they are both trying to find solutions and discuss impossible remedies. I really do hope that this isn't just talk trying to persuade everyone that everything's okay and then behind the scenes panicking about how they're going to continue. If their one-to-one -one policy is true, then the hardware shouldn't really be a problem. And with Google working hard alongside Huawei to find a solution to the software issues, Huawei might not be as badly affected as everybody suspects. In my last video, I played a clip of Trump where he alluded to, at some point in the future, having a relationship with Huawei again, while at the same time stating that Huawei are very dangerous. Good relations are in everybody's interest here, as American companies have a lot invested in China. The trouble is that now that China have found their feet, cheap labor costs that Western companies have enjoyed are not so cheap anymore. China has recently raised many people out of poverty, and as the economy strengthens, the manufacturing costs are going up. Could Trump be playing hardball with the Chinese in order to drive costs back down? Things are pretty bad for Huawei at the moment, but they're definitely not out of the game yet. It's definitely an interesting drama. Let me know what you think about the ban in the comments. Do you think that Huawei could survive this? And what is Trump really up to? I'll be doing some more on this as it develops, so make sure you're subbed to BTEC, double tap the notifications and smash the like button so you don't miss any future episodes. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, it's at BTEC, or add me on Snapchat at david.btech. Thanks for watching, my name's David, and this is BTEC.